Hey folks, this is David Smith at Correctional Officer Lifestyle. Um, I'm going to start a new video series on the big rocks of the Florida Department of Corrections. Um, the big rocks is something that Secretary uh, Mark Inch came up with when he took over as Secretary of the Florida Department of Corrections. And it is based on the Parable of the Rocks. And the Parable of the Rocks is that you have rocks and you have pebbles and you have sand. The rocks represent things in your life that are super important, vitally important. You gotta have them. Family, friends, your health, goals, doing what you love, fighting for a cause, etc. Things that you absolutely have to have. Okay. Um, the pebbles represent important things, but not nearly as important as the big rocks. Okay. Your job, casual hobbies, spending time with people you don't really like. Um, those are your pebbles and the, the sand is small things that don't matter. Video games, menial tasks, being mad at people for stupid things. Um, so as the parable goes, if you, you start with a jar and the jar is your life. And if you add all the sand, all the small things that don't matter. Sure, it's all going to fit. It's all going to fit in your life. Video games, menial tasks, being mad at people for stupid things. Yeah, it's all going to fit. And then you can turn around and fit all your pebbles in the same jar. Your job, casual hobby, spending time with people you don't really like. But that's going to take up so, so much room in your life, you're going to have to leave a few big rocks out. Your family, your friends, health, your goals, doing what you love. Fighting for a cause. You're going to have to leave all that out. But if you start. If you start. With the big rocks. And you put the big rocks in first. There's enough gaps. That you can then put the pebbles in. And they'll all fit. You might have to rearrange a couple of things. But they'll all fit. And then you can add sand. And it'll fit. It'll all fit. So it's a priority driven thing. It's a priority driven thing. <laughs> now my mind is like a box of cats. So I wrote down the 10 big rocks. Um, I actually did write them down from memory, but I wrote them down so that I don't draw a blank while I'm recording the video because they're that important, okay? There's 10 of them. Safety, service, training, wellness, manage, review, fiscal viability, improvement, rehabilitation, and restoration. Those are the 10 big rocks of the Department of Corrections. We take care of these 10 things first. Everything else can come second. And we will have the ability to do everything else. Now, the series that I'm starting, I'm going to start... With number one and going down the list number one is safety okay so to talk about safety um folks if we're not coming to work to be safe what are we coming to work for if we are not coming to work to provide a safe environment for staff for inmates for offenders then what are we coming to work for we need to come to work with safety as our forefront in our mind um, I pray every day on the way to work. I do. I pray every single day on the way to work. And I pray basically the same prayer every day. I thank God for the day. I thank God for all of his many blessings. I thank God for allowing me to get up, get dressed in my uniform, and go to work thank God for having a job and then I ask God for very specific things 
I ask him for angels on assignment in the dormitories to help us keep peace. I ask him for a hedge of protection around the sergeants and officers on the compound so that they might go home at the end of shift to their families. I ask for staff enough to safely conduct business at the prison. And I ask for guidance and wisdom for the leadership of the prison, myself included, to make decisions that are pleasing to God and not necessarily pleasing to this world. So, notice in there, I mentioned the safety of my staff. But inadvertently, when I ask for angels on assignment in the dorms to maintain peace, I'm asking for safety for the inmates in the institution that I work in because whenever there's no peace, inmates get hurt. Inmates and staff get hurt when there's not peace. So those are things that I ask for. Um, I want to let you know when you go to work, you are there to watch inmates. You're not there to talk to your homies on the phone. You're not there to go outside and hit up in a smoking circle with your buddies and sit there and shoot the breeze. You are not there to get on the computer and take a stroll down memory lane when you get on the roster management system and the inactive file and see who all's left. That's not your job. Your job is to manage inmates. Your job is to make sure the inmates' three C's are taken care of. Care, custody, control. Okay? You're here to make sure that the inmates' needs are met. In doing so, you are here to make sure that the inmate population stays safe. In the performance of your duties, it is your job to make sure that the inmates remain safe. Also in the performance of your duties, it is your job to make sure your fellow staff members remain safe. We have several plans in place to facilitate that happening. We have the NIMS system, National Incident Management System, the ICS system, Incident Command Structure. All of that is in place so that we can deal with whatever emergencies rise and we can deal with it effectively and communicate with any outside agencies that we need to communicate with in order to facilitate that mission. So we need to be worried about keeping each other safe. We need to be worried about keeping ourselves safe. We need to be worried about keeping the inmates safe. There's a reason that safety is number one on the big rocks of the Florida Department of Corrections. There is an absolute reason that safety is number one. Um, when things go right, when things go absolutely right, it's a not safe environment. I was looking at the memorial wall we have in my institution the other day, and... In the time that I have been employed in the Department of Corrections, 26 and a half years, in that time, 38 people have lost their lives on duty in the state of Florida, 38. Uh, some of them, I, I'm going to go on ahead and say the vast majority of them, after a physical altercation with an inmate, they couldn't handle it. And their heart stopped and they just, they passed from a heart attack. That is a curse of our department. That is a curse of our job. Um, I will go into that when it comes down to wellness. And I know I'm going to be the pot calling the kettle black, but I'm working on mine. I'm in the gym. I'm doing what I can to make myself better. Okay. Um, but one of the people that we lost was a colonel. He was out on a canine call and was gunned down by the inmates they were chasing in an ambush and died. Um, one of our sergeants was stabbed to death by an inmate. And if I read the reports right, it's while he was assisting an officer that was attacked by this inmate. Um, 
when things go right in a correctional environment, when people are doing their job, they can lose their lives. Okay? Uh, that always has to be in the forefront of your mind. Don't put it in the back of your mind. Keep it in the forefront of your mind. Um, one of our sergeants, I was telling a bunch of trainees that while the inmates are incarcerated felons, they are they are actually people. And we have to treat them accordingly. They are people. We cannot view them as anything other than people. And one of our sergeants, he told me that in his mind, he views them differently. And I asked him why. He says, and I'm, I'm not going to tell you who this is, but he says he sees them as predators. He sees them as predators. He sees us as prey and them as predators. And if you think about it, they have the advantage on us. They have numbers. They absolutely have numbers. They have the advantage on us. It is our job to use this mass between our ears that some folks refer to as a brain to think about how we are conducting business um, in order to maintain peace and safety. Okay. His mindset of seeing all the inmates as predators has allowed him to have more years behind that fence than I've got and stay safe. Whatever mindset you use, use it. Okay. Stay safe. Keep the inmates safe. Keep your fellow staff safe. Keep the offenders safe. Keep the visitors and the volunteers safe. Keep the OPS workers. OPS is our civilian workers. Keep them safe. Safety is the biggest thing we've got at the department. Safety is number one in the Department of Corrections Big Rocks in Florida. And it's there for a reason. Okay? But let me tell you something else that goes along with safety. Staffing. Okay, um, if you are one of those people that believes that the department gives you sick leave so that you can use it when you've got it, you are there, you're, you're doing it wrong. You're thinking about it wrong. You're there for the wrong reason. Okay, um, I have had to use sick leave in mass quantities on a couple of occasions. Number one, my first son. Number two, my second son. Number three, a back surgery. Took me out for three months. Okay? Had I been one of those people that waits till I have 12 hours of sick leave on the book so I can take a day off, I'd have gone without a paycheck. All three of those times. I'm not that kind of person. And let me tell you something. If you are not there... You can't make a difference. I hear so many people talk about the conditions in the department need to improve and blah, blah, blah. Part of the conditions in the department can improve if everybody shows up and puts forth their effort to keep everybody safe. Folks, you show up. We got to cover your vacancy. We're covering vacancies from, a, from an officer that could come in the door fresh, ready to work with somebody that wants to go home and they're tired. They're not at 100% and you could be. Okay? Whenever you get to calling in sick and you're not really sick, I want you to think about looking around at your peers and telling me which one you don't mind getting hurt or killed because you didn't decide to come to work that day. Because you thought it was more important to go do something with other people, with your friends, with your families, okay? And I get it. The Big Rocks parable states that one of the Big Rocks is your family and one of the Big Rocks is your friends. But it also states if you make time for them first, you'll have time for the pebbles that matter. And one of the pebbles that matters is your job. We're not asking you to go above and beyond. We're asking you to come to work and do your job, Okay. In the Department of Corrections in the state of Florida, a lot of the institutions are going to an eight and a half hour shift model, but most of us are still on a 12 hour shift model. 12 hour shift model, we're asking you to work half a day for half a month. 
12 hours a day, 14 days a month. One half of one day for half of the days of a month. It's all we're asking for. And people are not able to do that. It's not safe. Come to work. Make a difference. I promise you, if everybody's at work, the place will run safer. And you can get more done in the way of the other nine big rocks of the Department of Corrections. The other nine, service, training, wellness, manage, review, fiscal viability, improvement, rehabilitation, and restoration. You can accomplish so much more of those when you have staff coming to work. Okay? Folks, this is David Smith at Correctional Officer Lifestyle. I'm not trying to browbeat anybody. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. I'm just trying to say we need to be safe. We as a collective unit need every cog on the wheel to be here so that the cogs will keep turning and everything will be safe. I can't say it more plain than that. Make good correctional decisions. Keep your head on a swivel. You can't do that if you're not at work. You can't keep people safe if you're not at work. All right? If you like what you see, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications when I post new videos. Hit me up in the comments. I'm probably going to get some off of this one. That's good. I like it. I don't have a problem with it. Hit me up in the comments, folks. Um, always remember, we don't have a place for domestic violence in this world. It needs to be eradicated, and it can start with you. All right? 1-800-799-SAFE. If you're in a one-out, 1-800-799-SAFE. If you know somebody that's in a once-out, tell them that number. 1-800-799-SAFE. Okay? If you do nothing else for that person, you've done enough by giving them that number because now they can call and get the resources that they need. Folks, this is David Smith at Correctional Officer Lifestyle. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. Y'all stay safe behind the fence. I'll see you in the next video.